Hello, so it's Caroline at For the Love of Crochet, and today I'm going to be showing you my attempt at making granny square shorts for my son. So he has requested some super funky granny square shorts, and I will show some inspiration here. Here's a few photos that I'm going off of just to get my um, creative mind flowing on how I want to design these. In a previous video, I showed some garland type ribbon that is going to be like the waistband. It's very stretchy and easy to crochet into. And then I also found the super epic <laughs> granny square ribbon, but they're not really granny squares. I want to say it's made out of thread. It's still a granny square, just different. So I found this and that's going to be part of my design. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show you some of the designs I've come up with and get your thoughts and ideas on which granny squares to go with. Okay, so here we have a simple granny square that is a flower. So he he does like, he wants them super funky. He didn't mind the granny squares, but when I showed him three images, he said he wanted this. And so we're gonna get to some, some of the designs I've come up with. So here is the super wash merino wool I found at Joann's. And here's just a few colors. So this is just a simple flower with a two round granny square around it to shape into a square. I would have liked to put different colored flowers in different colored backgrounds, but not do these three tones. My son was going for many colors. So he was, he didn't, I told him I could change the color in the flowers and he chose this one. Now, when he saw this in the picture, he's like, I want it like that. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even make those. <laughs> so that was a little strike to my heart. So that is why I had changed my design here. So here's the first option. And then the second option, this is what I was going with. Now this one, I was using Eddie Bauer, um, 100% cotton, has a lot of yardage, also found it at Joann's. And I also told him, look, I can change the color of the flowers and the centers of the flowers, but I think it's really hard for for non-crocheters to really get the picture of what that square will look like unless I work it up. And I really liked it this way. I, I wanted this to be um, more attracting to the flower design and then let the granny square be black. And then that way, when I put this on the side as a side stripe on the leg, that it would look putting two of these design elements together and really bringing out the colors. And I thought about just changing the color of the centers only, and then that way it would bring out these colors. But again, I think he's having a hard time picturing it. So <laughs> now you've seen those ideas that I shown in the beginning and he really liked those. So I am trying to come up with something. Now these had some really beautiful colors and these are just three of them. And so you can imagine if I change just the center, how it would make it pop along with this as a side panel. And then I have another option. So my third option is this one. And this one is also made with the Superwash Merino found at Joann's. And this is just your basic three round granny square changing colors every round. This is the one that he favored the most out of all the three that I just showed you. <laughs> this is the third option. But again, so when I showed him these pictures, he said he liked this the best. But when he saw this in the side angle, he was like, what about those? I like those. So then I switched it up and I tried again. So this is going to be the fourth option. Now I went with a completely different yarn because he liked all the different colors surrounded by black. I figured... I picked a completely different yarn. This is a number one acrylic 
mandala found at Hobby Lobby and it's supposed to have all these colors, but notice it's supposed to have all these colors. Do you even see this color? No. And it's in there. A lot of it, as you can tell. <laughs> So I went with this mandala yarn that I found at Hobby Lobby and it's a number one weight. So it's a very thin yarn. It's acrylic. So it's gonna be easy wash, easy dry. Whereas those ones, the merino wool and the cotton, cotton will be fine, but they're both lay flat to dry. So with this one, he is safe to wash it and dry it. So I liked it for that reason. It's also a very thin, and drapey type of fabric that it's creating. And again, I went with the flower design and changed the colors. Now, again, I still like the single flower color with a single background. And then here it is again, but this is when the color changed. So I thought, well, let me try and incorporate the color change, but in this particular yarn, it doesn't change colors very often. You're stuck with a good size ball with each color. I really, really like these ones, but I do favor more the very light to dark to bright uh, square combination rather than, um, I also like this one, but it's kind of hard to see on camera where it, the flower color is the same as the edging color. So again, I really like the bright, the light to bright, the certain combinations are nicer than others. And I still like a solid square surrounded by the flower. And I have not showed him these. <laughs> so this is the fourth option after he said he really liked these. And I think it really complements this like, if this is what he's going for, I think this is best representing this. And I got these in two colors. So I also got it in this color. Let me give you the names here. This one I believe is called Jingle Tinter. I believe those are all the colors in here. This is a true representation of what's in here, but this one is not because I see turquoise and there's no turquoise in here. Um, and this one is called Beats. This one's called Beats. Um, and you get this where you find the thread and because it's a number one. So those are my four options. Okay, so you saw all my four choices for designing this shorts for my son. And this is the Hobby Lobby Mm, it's called it's in the ribbon section it's called the ribbon boutique and this was $3.99 for this whole roll and you can see that it's super stretchy so it's going to be great for a waistband for my son's shorts because I can crochet into these holes to sew them on to the shorts itself so I really like that feature um never made granny square shorts before or any type of pant. And then this is the thicker one. And this one is $5.99 for the whole roll. On the thing, it says it can make five to seven headbands. It's 65% polyester and 35 cent rubber. So great headband too. This was also in the ribbon section and they have quite a few options. I will show that video here again where they have a white colored one and they had a white colored one of this one I believe and they are not stretchy though so they are very sturdy but look at the back of those so this is the front and the back but I'm like wondering how did they get all this black is it because they sewed it from the back together I'm not sure how this because you see none of this black on the front design, but it's all over the back. So it's very interesting construction. And then this is going to be very sturdy. As I mentioned before in a previous video, that this would make a great um, strap. And I want to put it as the side panel on your shorts. So like um, racing short, you know what I mean, down the side. 
where the pocket would go type where that seam would go and I just thought that would be cool because you could even crochet sew onto this these ends as well I know it's kind of hard to see but there is openings there now I want to say this was like $5.99 or $4.99 a yard so I got two yards that's why it was like it's kind of pricey it's kind of like their fabric price um, so I'm going to show you the four pictures real quick. So the first option, the flower using the merino wool, one with all the black around them. Now I could have made those into granny squares too, and I didn't think about showing him that option. Hmm, that's, I should have made those in a granny square as well. Not sure what to do. <laughs> so many options. I kind of want to surprise him and I kind of like, I want him to give me feedback as well. So that is why I sent him pictures. But being that he's not a crocheter, uh, so here was the third option, which is the granny squares in wool. That's the one he favored the most. And then this is what I went with after he said he liked the ribbon. And I changed it to that one. And I think that is what I'm sticking with. I would like your feedback because you all are crocheters and the inspiration was this short. He saw those and was like, yeah, <laughs> I'll wear them. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> there we have um, my Granny Square shorts ideas. Now, being that it's Granny Square Day, August 15th, I wanted to show you my current squares for the, for a year of Granny Squares. I have made seven total so far. I am on the eighth one, which is this one, and I'm getting stuck here on the ends. Like I can do the pattern, but it's what to do on the ends for the different rows. So I'm a little stuck there, so I'll get there, but mm, I have the first seven. A lot of people are joining in on a year of granny squares with um, Jenny at In My Spare Time Crochet. So here's just a recap. Here's number one. I love this one. And I think I'm gonna just go back since I'm ahead and just make a bunch of those ones because it is super cute. I have the second one on my blocking board. So there's that. So there's that one. I put that one on the blocking board because it's slightly smaller. So, so pretty though. And then the third one is this one. That is mine. Very, very pretty. Love the way that it came out. Um, I'm using Karen Simply Soft and Big Twist, but they are ranging in size from 8 inches to 10 inches with my 5.5 hook and my tension and how I crochet. Now this next one came out even smaller. This is my smallest square, so I'm going to put this one, unfortunately, tie in my ends. Okay, I made it better for you. So as you can tell, I'm really having to stretch it out. If you ever buy a blocking board, um, I think these are good for squares, but for something like this, I think I would want the ones that have three or four prongs so I can make them all even. But, so the center is very dense and heavy. And then of course this is very lacy. This side stretching more than this side. So I don't favor this one just because of the way that, how dense this is in comparison to the way the square is, but put together with the rest of the motifs, I'm hoping it, it comes out fine. But it does look a little, I'm not sure what I'm doing, but <laughs> it looks a little off in this corner, but it, it's fine. I did follow the pattern just fine. You do have to pay attention a bit. Not my favorite square, the fourth one. I'm not, I don't even know how you say that. Aqualegria. 
So hers look more pointy. <laughs> and they also want to curl in. So yeah, not my favorite square, the fourth one. I don't want that one. Fifth square looks awesome. I really, really liked this one because of the simple design and then the decorative edge type. I thought it was super cool. It did not turn out super cool. <laughs> I actually found this one super challenging. So this one came out the biggest, the largest, and I originally had a different edging and I felt like, okay, that wasn't the right color to choose. So I'll, I think I took a video. If I did, I'll put it up here. So I took, if you can see, I made a huge, it was so big. It just was so big. So I would change that yarn ripped it out and went to a four millimeter. Now I've originally been making all my squares in 5.5. So I ripped that out and I went back to this lavender in Karen Simply Soft. I don't know if that's the color, I'm calling it lavender. And it came out much better. This one looks extra long, but I, I assure you it's the right. <laughs> It's funny how my ten my tension changes so drastically, but I went with a four millimeter and this is the right size. As you can see, it's fitting all the sides perfectly, so it will match the other ones. But I'm finding that I'm having to change my hook on these less, um, like this, this is a lot of spaces and it just created a, a a very open square. I really like that square now that it's with the four millimeter, but it was a little challenging for me. Okay, the next one we have is Sweet Violet. Now, I also made this one in the wrong color and it came out way, way too big. Um, I think this one came out super big and I went to I went to Joann's to get another color so that I could play with um, the different designs. And this is how this one turned out. So this is the new color I got and it is a Karen Simply Soft color. And I ripped that, that light green type color and went with this. And as you can see, it's fitting all the pegs nicely. It will fit with the other squares. And that is my goal to make sure they all match up. So if I'm finding that they're turning out too big, then I'm switching to, so the border is the only thing that I switched to, I think a 4.5 hook. So if you're following along, you may have to switch your hook to get the right size. But if you're, I'm, a, I'm my tension changes. So that is the sixth one called Sweet Violet. And then the seventh one is this one. And this is the last one I have made. And this one is very small for me, but I think once I learned that those were coming out big, I thought this one was gonna be big because I had four different squares. And so I, I think I went with a 4.5 hook on these. So you make each of these four squares, put them together, and then give it this lovely border. I really like, I really like all of the, I really like this one as well. And combined with the other ones together in the big picture, it's coming out really nice. The one I do not like the most is this one. <laughs> because it's so dense, um, Although it would make a lovely blanket. It's just not the one that I'm favoring for the blanket that I wanna make and that size is different. Still beautiful. So yeah, there we go. That is the final one of my Year of Granny Squares cow. It's been a lot of fun and it's giving me a lot of confidence because I have been able to follow all of them except this one and I know I'll get it. It's just these ends. What do you do on the ends? <clears throat> I do see a little bit of a pattern, but I crochet at night and I watch YouTube while I do it. So I probably should close out the world and give it a go again. I have done this stitch before, which is called the wheel 
I forgot what it's called, but it's a wheel. I'm looking forward to number 11, this one. Solid color with some dimension, a dimensional stitch there. So my plan, because I'm doing all of these squares, I know we'll get 52 squares, but not all of them are created equally. I am thinking that I wanna make this one the most and do like a checkerboard design. So this would be the main checkerboard and then all the other ones, all the other designs that I can fit to go with it, I will sample all the other ones. But with 52 squares, and these are about eight inches. So because they're ranging from eight to 10 inches for me, I'm trying to get them to nine inches. So this is a nine inch square, so nine inch squared. Mm, I wonder how many of these you'll need to make a blanket. I do like this one the most. <laughs> Okay, so let me know if you like granny squares and which option I should go for in my son's shorts. Help me. <laughs> Give me any suggestions you possibly can. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. All right, and hit that like and subscribe if you want to see more. Bye!